All right, what's up people? Uh, I wasn't going to video this because I'm gonna look like a freaking idiot. Uh, the good news is this is the fourth wheel that I'm doing. Um, but I figured it'd be smart to chronicle my use of the, uh, the uh, Revolution uh, mounter and the, wait, what do we call it? Yeah, that one's called the Revolution and this one's called the um, Road Force. We'll just call it Revolution and Road Force, we'll call it that. Um, but I figured it'd probably be best to chronicle this and show you my learning process. Um, the guys basically throw you in the deep end to show you a couple of uh, couple of moves on a uh, on a single wheel, uh, and then I just kind of I was kind of over it. We we got the thing installed, shot a whole video. I'm like I just want to do this. I need some time on my own to figure this out. Uh, and so the first tire was really difficult. The second tire was a little less difficult. The third. Um, you know, it was not that difficult. I did that one the best. Um, but I'm just trying to figure things out here and I'm going to give a little bit different take on this. That There's not a lot of simple videos like this, like what I'm going to make uh, in this chronicling. There's not a lot of simple stuff on, you know, how do you actually do this from start to finish. So let's take the wheel off, get the wheel off the car. We're going dis we're gonna, to we're gonna, um, demount the tire. Uh, these Pirellis are going to show you why we're putting new tires, even though this thing only has 4,000 miles on it. Uh, we're going to put some uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's uh, on the car using uh, uh, lots of lube. Uh, that was the big lesson I learned in the first tires. I didn't do enough lube, um, so I couldn't force match the tire. But anyway, let's, uh, let's get moving and not sit here and talk your ear off while I'm doing this. Um, this uh, It's funny, I'm using a... $70,000, $60,000 machines, and I'm using a Harbor Freight jack here until I get my lift set up over here. The Tesla actually fits this jack without any jack pad pretty easily. This is a Model 3. I do have spacers. I have to get uh, 15 millimeter spacers for the rear because I'm upsizing from 235 to 245 I probably would, you could probably go to 255 on these stock wheels and then just do like a 10 mil spacer. But we're gonna do it this way. So I don't have my model numbers dialed in yet. The goal is I'd like to be able to sell these machines uh, through obsessedgarage.com, but they have an old school network of how all this goes down, how they sell stuff. Old school, good old boys, delete distributor network. Plus there's an installation component that adds a little complication to this. This is the uh, mid-torque, which we have in the store, obsessedgarage.com. Took me a long time to convince Milwaukee to let me sell this stuff, so maybe it will take me a long time to have Hunter let me sell this stuff. It's always my dream to have a tire mounter and balancer. I just hope that it's not too difficult you know, the thesis here was that if the, uh, if a 10, if a 10 or $8 an hour, um, entry level discount tire guy can do this, I ought to be able to do it, but maybe not. Well, I've gotten three tires done, so we're doing okay. We got carbon ceramics, so just gotta be careful. Okay. So you can see why I'm changing these tires. If you'll see, yeah, corded. Corded, corded, corded. <laughs> That's super, super not good. Well, the car has some auto steer functionality to it uh, that the Model 3 does from what I understand. And um, you, uh, I was, you know, I put the new suspension on. I balled the old, uh, the old toe. And I was driving around town. So I'm like, man, this car drives straight. Straight as an arrow. Well, you can see what happened. Let's take the weights off. So the odd thing here is we're taking these professional grade machines. These machines are designed to improve and create maximum efficiency. These wheel weights on the Tesla are freaking awesome though. Can maybe somebody, can somebody look that up? Suggest to me, where do I get these? These are uh, cut to, are these Hoffman? It doesn't say anything on it. These are really nice, pliable, they come off, they don't leave any residue behind, and they're on there, super stout. So, can you, can you guys, you smart guys that are good at researching crap, can you hook me up with that? I'm gonna hook you up with all the data on this machine. You hook me up with that. 
I also want to find some really sophisticated, some nice quality tools for working on this stuff. See how easy that comes off? That's freaking awesome. And then it's super pliable. Okay. I'm assuming that means if you're cutting the weights, like they're not pre-set up, that you would have to, uh, you have to have some sort of scale in order to do that. Okay, so this is the most sophisticated, I should have gone and looked at the model number, I'll put it in the description. But this is the most um, expensive uh, full auto, auto machine. What I found is that it's not truly full auto. Um, you know, you've, you've, you do have to know some tricks of the trade in order to make this thing work properly. Uh, I only have one airline, so I'm switching back and forth. Because my compressor isn't set up yet. Okay, compressor's aired up. That's my new silent piston compressor, pretty sweet. All right, so what you do, take the tire. Now, there's a pin right here that you have to be mindful of after we get the wheel in the air. You just throw it on there, hit my go button. Brings it up in the position. Find the pin, and if that pin goes through one of the holes. See this pin right here? That pin, you have to, because the wheel will sit and push the pin in, so then you just have to find the spot. And then we're going to set our tire clamp. Now, there are a couple of these things, I'll show you in a second, but let's just put this in. So we want to kind of center it up a little bit if we can just so the clamp doesn't scratch the surface. Push the top button here, and then push these down like that, and we're sitting in place. Learn that. You know, when you start, like, I don't even know how to do any of that. Just gotta figure it out. Like all these videos, they have all these videos, but none of them are simple. It's always too complicated. Or they skip over the simplest of things, the stuff that I need to know in order to do this. First thing we do, I always forget to do this, is I've got to, let's clamp it. So we go to clamp, clamp the wheel, boom. Now I'm not gonna do the same as last. I don't feel comfortable doing that yet. So I've been resetting it every time. Now the clamp, we have a couple of options here. You can switch and put this piece on there. So you can put this thing in or the one that's on there. They give you two of each or you know, the one that's on there is this size. So if you find, you may find that this one fits the wheel better. So you just kind of have to play it. This one fits the Tesla's best. So you have a couple of different options there. They give you a crappy little tool. This one's not very good. Um, and then they give you a taller, longer one, I guess for like trucks or something like that. So this is to remove. So we have to air the tire down. <laughs> I kept forgetting to do that. Uh, so you want to, um, I want to, you want some fancy ones. You need, can you put in the uh, put in the comments? Tell me, you guys who know this stuff, can you find me one that's really cool, that's higher end than this generic one? Take my finger. Now, I also need to buy these guys too. I need to find these things so that I have some in case you shoot one across the. Uh, so this is the core for your. Um, these are Presta Presta valves, I believe. They're not Schraders. I think these are Prestas. Uh, and so it's probably a good idea to have some of those sitting around for when you shoot it across the room and you can't find it. Um, so obviously we took the valve stem cap off, took our, took our core out, now our tires air down. That's the part I'd forget to do all the time. So now we're going to set our diameter, set our spot. So I'm pressing the pedal on the bottom here, which you can't see, but there's a pedal on the right and a pedal on the left. So then you're going to take the upper, upper roller, and I want to position that where the TPMS sensor is. Come back just a tiny bit more. And then, oh, don't do that, don't do that. I'm gonna be gentle and slow and controlled. You basically want it where you can kind of fit your fingernail in there, but it sits just a tiny bit lower. So then I'm gonna set that as my location. And now I'm gonna demount. So I don't need any lube, I don't think, to demount, because I haven't used any, so I don't think I need anything. I think I only need lube for mounting. 
So let's, let's see how this goes. So I'm on D mount. I've got the thing positioned. So now I should be able to press go and this thing should do its thing. And then I hope, so the first two wheels, I nicked them. The second one, or third one, I didn't mess up. And I'll show you what I messed up. If that tucks in there, it's gonna break, break the bead for me. It's breaking beads. The, uh, the mount head comes down. Then it slowly pushes the bead. So it pushes the top bead down further to give enough room for the mount head to grab it, see? It breaks it loose. Now there's all this styrofoam, there's all this foam inside of these tires. Push that down, that goes and just barely touches the edge of the wheel. The little fork comes in. Now it pulls it up. Now this is where I made a mistake. So I gotta be careful here. Oh, we're just breaking the top bead. The top should break on its own nice and easily. Okay, so now it's gonna go automatically to the bottom. This is where I made a mistake. I gotta be careful here because this is gonna cut my hand. I don't have any gloves. Let me just use this bag here because of the, uh, the bead, because of the, the cords. So where I made a mistake in getting the bottom bead off you have to lift up on the side here, and it kind of, I think it tells you on the screen, but I didn't notice it. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. Now, pull up. Gotta help it up, and it'll break the bottom bead. If you don't do that, that's where damage happens. And then on this 20 inch, you gotta hold. I also learned it's shot, and, and it doesn't catch because the 20 inch wheel's too big. So it doesn't catch the top of this and it fell off and slapped my wall. So there we go. Yeah. I look like a genius. So the only mistake I was making before was I'd forgotten to, I didn't take my hand. It even tells you right here. It shows you a picture of it to make sure you lift your hand and you lift it up. And because otherwise it sits down and then it, this, this won't break the bottom bead and it won't come off. So that time piece of cake, I didn't make any any nicks or scratches on this wheel, so we're good. And now it should move everything out of the way on its own. It'll tell us here it's gonna finish without me having the pedal. So now I'm gonna unclamp because, actually no, I'm gonna leave it clamped because I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my new wheel, that's right. But this is where I learned another lesson. So we've got the paste here, or the uh, lube. Uh, and so because I'm going to road force, and I'll talk about this in a minute, but because I'm going to road force and I'm going to have to force match, I'm going to have to rotate the tire just because of the low, the tiny little sidewalls on these, I'm going to lube the crap out of the inner of the wheel because that'll help the tire rotate. The first tire I did, I had a really difficult time. I had to demount it and remount it in order to shift, to turn the tire. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute here. And this pedal... You know, it goes faster and slower depending on how you depress the pedal. This is a good test study of wheels. I probably should get some junkyard wheel, but... This is a good test study for me because I, I don't really care that much about these wheels. But I did smack. I did have a, the one wheel I have on the inner flip here. I have like a little smack. I probably didn't set this thing correct. I probably didn't set it in the right spot. So... I, I'm thinking that's why I had it, why it hit and, and made a little divot in the wheel. I also picked some rather complicated wheels to do in that tiny little baby sidewalls aren't very forgiving. So I'm err on, erring on the side of using too much of this crap than too little. All right, let me grab my tire. PS4s have an inside and an outside, so you need to keep that in mind. It'll say it. Now I'm going to lubricate this as well. Make a huge mess. Supposedly this lube dries to a powder. I don't know if I believe that, but this is the Hunter 
under design lube, so there's one, there's two. I promise we'll get some really high quality footage on this as I do more wheels. And hopefully I'll have some more high, high quality advice for you as I figure out how to do this better. I'm, I, I, I should have videoed the first wheel. <laughs> it, was a, it was a mess because I had no idea what I was doing. All right, let's double check our inside. So this is outside. Now I take this puppy. Let's see if I can get this done right for this time. So you want to push it on like that. D-mount. So I'm going to go bottom mead mount. And uh, angle. So it says push tire down during rotation. Go to pedal, press the go pedal to continue. Okay. Tilt the tire head toward the machine. Tilt the tire towards the machine so mount head can insert. Press the go pedal. Okay. There we go. This is the part I don't quite understand. Let's see. Let me retry. I think maybe I'm not supposed to push there, just push here. There we go. Okay. I was pushing like this and too much there, and then it wasn't able to, the arm wasn't able to do its thing. Okay. Now, top bead. Continue. Top bead. I want to continue. So, I don't think I'm going to need these, but let's bring these over. And I found that I probably need to do another calibration. These have been a bit too aggressive. So I've been having to do some manual, manual stuff here. See like there, it pinched the tire. A little more than I'd like. Let's try it. And I want to come up a bit with this. Boom. Yeah, so I, had, I just did a little manual adjustment on these. <laughs> That's the easiest, that's the best I've done on this, on this, this, this part. I've messed this part up quite a bit. Um, so that, that's been my best, best job here to date. Didn't touch the wheel, everything's good. I'd be nervous if this was something I cared about. This will now all come out of the way. Get to go. Whenever that red thing comes up, it just means that you can let go of the go button. I'm gonna put some air back in. Should I do, I don't think I need to do a bead massage, at least not at this. This should pop. And that's where putting the lube in I think has helped. I haven't had any issues with the uh, bead seating. So this thing just has, a, has an automatic torque spec where it clicks, good. I like to, uh, leaving it clamped feels safer when it's, when it's popping or when it's seating the bead. And then we go over here, and it will only go to 39 PSI. These need to be 42, and so I'll set the actual tire pressure when I get on the, uh, the balancer. That doesn't look good. Let's see if it'll pop for me. There's one. There it goes. Boom, two. Got this. I'm telling you, the first wheel took me two hours. Second one took me an hour. Third one took me 45 minutes. This one theoretically should take less time. Uh, part of the reason it took so long was not so much this part, um, but part of the, the biggest issue was um, getting force matching, and I'll show you that in a minute. And the, the first wheel never really matched, so I don't know if it's going to work at all. So I'm gonna unclamp, take the clamp off. I need to switch my airlines. Make sure it doesn't fall forward. Good. This one's off. 
And we'll bring it over to our other station. A lot of quirks on this thing here that I had to figure out. So first thing that I didn't realize is that these are two-sided. So depending on which fits, you can either put it this way or this way. It doesn't matter. You know, you're just, they're two different sizes. So each one of these, these little uh, collets have uh, two sides. So I've been leaving that on the threads, leaving that on there. I'm using this, which helps. This is a accessory that we bought that helps, um, let me switch my airlines. That accessory helps make sure the wheel face is never touched. So when I am doing fancy wheels in the future, it'll be good. Okay. And this is the hard part. I was watching all kinds of videos. Like nothing really ever tells me how to do this part. Let me see, am I in the way? Kind of. So just bring this here, the, uh, the balancer part. It's all pretty automatic. The other thing is like, so you set this pneumatic and I was trying to like get this perfect, but this has some give to it. So I just push on it in order to fit it where it needs to go. And then I just kind of seat it there. And this guy is freaking cool because these sit in the pockets, in the uh, pockets of the lug pockets. So it never touches the wheel. So instead of having this guy here touching the face, I've got this rather expensive, fancy thingy that allows me to position this. And then press this is the first time I'm doing this. So, yeah, I thought you could press this and it would automatically do it, but maybe not. Make sure that's seated, put that down. Oh, that's probably why, because that was touching. Okay, so we're on. The lesson I learned on this thing is you need to try to let it be as automatic as possible. Like it does everything for you. The problem is it doesn't really explain that it's doing everything for you. So we got a new tire on, we got it set up. All we do, we're gonna take the hood. Actually, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna do the, um, the tire pressure. I want 42 PSI. Let it do its thing. So there we go, proper tire pressure. You can't balance it without tire pressure. It would have told me that. So we would have been good anyway. All right, so the weights are removed. Uh, we're good to go. <clears throat> so now we take this thing. We want to do our road force first, which means we're going to have to take this thing off and we're going to have to put it on the other machine. I didn't fully understand all that. I thought road force meant that this thing did some sort of special balancing. Well, see, it's telling us here that we're not looking very good. Uh, and so uh, it's showing that us changing this thing really is only going to bring us down to 26 pounds. So in other words, there's a spot in the wheel that's going to feel bumpy. So it was the same issue I was having with the other front tire. I could never get it into full, full match. So we're going to go force match, which means I'm going to need to take the tire off and reposition it. I want to do this again. Let's do a verification spin. Let's see if we can fix it. Yes. There. Let's see if this is somewhat fixable. Now there's something also called a 180 match. I'm not 100% sure what that's all about yet. Yeah, see this, this is not looking good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my blue marker. I'm gonna make a mark right here on the tire. I'm gonna take a piece of tape. Now I had to just kind of figure out this by watching videos. There's actually videos built into the thing. And you press the servo button, that moves it, moves the wheel. So that's where I want my blue line on my tire. I want to match up with this blue line or this black line I'm about to put on the wheel, which is right here. And so now what I need to do, I need to take this off, put this up. Take this thing off. 
this here. And I'm going to rotate the tire. This is what road force actually means. So I'm going to take this tire and I'm going to rotate it. Oh shoot, don't do that. I'm going to actually rotate it on the wheel. There's actually an automatic mode for this. And this is where, the reason why I couldn't figure out how to do it is because I didn't have enough lubrication for it to work. Only problem is it's telling me that this isn't going to road force balance very well. It's going to have me move it around 57 times. I don't fully understand. I'm gonna have to get some clarification on that. All right, let's mount it first. Clamp it. Now I am gonna do same as last, but first thing I'm gonna do is this. Take the air out. match mount. So because it already knows where the valve stem is on this wheel, it should be good to go. And so what I want to do is my blue line, wherever that went, the blue line is here. I need that blue line to match up with that, with that other line that I did. So I'm going to rotate the tire in order to maximize this. So I'm going to continue. It's going to come down. It's going to break the bead. This also gives us a nice little bead massage as well. So this is why putting the lube was important on the inside of the wheel that I didn't do before, because I couldn't get the darn thing to rotate. Okay, so now I want this line to go over there, so I'm going to do it the other I'm going to do it there. See how the wheel is now rotating, but the tire is stuck. It always quits on me too soon. Ah. Okay, so I got those two lined up. I'm done. Now I can get those out of the way. Put my thingy back in. So we'll take this around. I'm telling you, I look like a freaking genius in comparison to how terrible I was the first time I did this. The problem is, is the machine's telling me this isn't going to work. So now I need to switch my airlines, which is annoying again. So you want the road force balancing to be. We want it to be like under 12 pounds or something like that. And I've got, it says it's only going to go to 25 here. So we're going to find out. <clears throat> Unclamp. Illegal move. down so I wonder the thing I had to figure out is how many times do I actually do this this is going to tell me to do it again and at what point do I actually damage the tire trying to do this too many times wow So 
the one thing I'm not really worried about is speed and efficiency. And so now the other question I have is that now that I've done that, do I just hit verification spin? Is that what I do here? Just hit this button? So we got to check our pressure. Pressure's good. This verification spin. Let's see what happens here. Come on, Road Force. Give me a good green number. Shoot. Yeah, see, we're at 27 pounds of, of Road Force. No, it tells me we're at 21 right now. So if I do this, it'll take me to 17. Well, let's keep trying. Let's see how long it takes. Let's scrape off our paint here. Put a new paint line, go servo here. The problem is my lube runs out after I did one of them like three or four times. So I wonder would a 180 match fix this better? Just not sure what to do here. Also, be a lot better once I get my airline set up. I hate trying to find that darn thing. Boom. It's back down. Oh shoot. Forgot the bead. I'm a little ahead of myself there. So like, how many times do I do this? You just end up shifting the darn, it's kind of like chasing weights. Do I end up chasing, do I end up chasing um, road force? So, but at least now I'll know when I have Todd come back here from Hunter, I'll, I'll know what questions to ask. Or maybe you guys can answer them, but I know how to mount balanced tires. I really like this thing, even though I don't think these things are gonna damage the face all that much. The wheel, now there's no chance of it. Hurts your speed a little bit, but This. See, I think I think I do a verification spin. I'm just not sure. Or do I start over? Still 19. Okay. Now it's telling me I can get from 19 to 13. Should I try it? Should I do it? Let's. What else we got to do? Let's do it. All right. Let's wipe off this. Let me servo it. There's our spot. I mean, maybe is it that these type of tire wheels and tires take more effort to get right because they're lower sidewall, more precise? Well, we'll find out if I can get it into road force here. If I can get it into accepted range by doing it a third time, maybe, maybe it's worth it. 
I don't know if I like that little thing. I might just start manually just lifting it up. I am starting to get the hang of this. I mean, imagine you do hundreds of wheels. You'd probably get, good, you'd get really good at this. I am getting good at this. Jeez. This thing is junk. Gotta figure out a better chuck that actually works. It already doesn't work. What the heck is wrong with this thing? You see, I'm lifting this on here is more convenient. Yeah, I like this better. The only problem with doing this, the amount I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna forget how to do it every time. I have to relearn. Yeah, we're gonna have to figure out some better air chucks for this, because these things are terrible. Application spin. See if we get to 13 pounds. Come on, baby. Give us a road force. Give us a balance. Ah. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm not moving it again. How many times you gotta move it? Back to balance, we're done. So does that mean I just don't have a balanced wheel or tire? What does that mean? So now, This is the part I don't quite understand. Gotta tell me where to put all my weights. So that's what we're gonna figure out. I'm gonna ask these questions. Warning. Leave it. Check spin. Two and a half ounces. That doesn't seem right. Let me check it again. Like, how does it keep changing? <laughs> Every time I do it, Changes, okay. So now I need 1.75 ounces. So I guess I'm gonna use this big strip here. These are quarter ounces. And I gotta clean the wheel right at that spot there. So this is the part I don't know what to do. So I just don't have, the wheels just aren't road forced. Is that the idea? This. Find the middle one, one, two, three. So that's the middle one. And I'm going right there. Okay, next. Need a half an ounce, which I have these guys. So that half an ounce is going right there. Next, servo, need another half an ounce right there. Well, that's exactly where the weight was before. Now, we got that weight on there, now we check it. It'll tell us if it's okay or not. The risk is you keep adding weight, see? This is what I'm afraid of. So now I need one more quarter ounce in here. I don't think this is how you do it. That's all right, we'll take the wheels back off the car and have uh, Todd come and help us here. There's only one way to learn how to do this crap, it's to just frickin' do it. Come on, call it okay. It's 
it's okay, but it's gonna have a vibration to that spot. We'll go drive it and then we'll redo it if we have to later or get new tires or I don't know. I don't know what to do. But this was supposed to take like minutes to do and not have to freaking rotate the tire over and over and over and over again. Does that just mean these tires? I mean, these are Michelins for gosh sakes. It's the best tire on the planet. Don't worry about denibbing and this is a big time learning curve. So these I have 15 millimeter spacers in the front and 20 in the rear. I need to get 15s for the rear too. <clears throat> So, not too bad. I did this wheel without any damage. I was able to figure out how to force match it better. Now I'm do it a little bit more efficiently with the, using the preset TPMS area. Getting the bead to seat was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be than these. I'll let you know, because the two rears say that they're okay from a road force perspective and the two fronts say that they're not. And it seems like I had, I had a lot of weights. We'll find out. Some of you will probably tell me on the, uh, in the comments that have done this before. Not too bad considering there's no one here watching me, I'm just doing it myself. I didn't totally jack anything up. Just made one little divot on two wheels that's on the inner lip that you can't really see, but I want this to be, you know, I want this to continue to be touchless. Touchless and problem free. So when I do get fancy wheels, I can confidently say, I'm doing it right. It's amazing how much better these tires look than those Pirellis. So, that's a wrap. Wrap for today, anyway. I'll keep you posted. Next video will probably be coming back around to what did I do wrong here. Um, I'll have, uh, actually I actually have Todd watch my procedure there so he can give me some tips and then maybe have them come back, Todd and Glenn from Hunter Engineering have them come back and you know cue me in on what what you know what what I'm doing wrong, what adjustments I can make, how I can improve it, um, how do I deal with things like that where it won't road force balance, um, and then continuing to hone in the definition of what that actually means. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. I'll keep you posted.